Slowly giving up, please. We are way over the slow part. We're dropping like flies. Oh boy. Yeah. Men are slowly giving up and nobody cares. Increasingly, more and more men are giving up giving up on relationships, careers, and society as a whole. Resentment is growing, unemployment is becoming rampant, and keeping your head above water seems almost impossible for many men today. This is leading to more men than ever dropping out of society entirely. And it's not just that, men are becoming infantilized. With terms like adulting now becoming normal, it's clear that something up- Huh? Three stages of adulting? What? Either way, Honestly, it's no surprise. I mean, the fucking world is fucked, literally. Inflation is up, the economy is ruined. The two uh, presidential candidates are both ridiculous in America. There's wars going on all over the fucking place. Ugly is happening yeah. and needs to be addressed. We live in such a strained, unnatural environment that is bound to start to wear on society. But men in particular are battling to keep up and are slowly giving up. Giving up on dreams, giving up on trying, and giving yeah, up on Yeah, because everything is way too expensive. And for a large part, it's really not their fault. As this trend isn't just a personal it's struggle, not, yeah. but a societal issue that we must urgently address. So why is this happening? And why has it gotten so bad in 2024? On the surface, it's a long and complicated story. Life has never been simple for any human, and objectively speaking, for men in the West today, it's never been better. We have all the technology we need, food delivered to yep. your door with a tap- Like, in theory, we should be at the best point in life, like, uh, of the world, at the best point in life and stage of the Earth that we currently are at, in- terms of development and shit but in reality everyone's just fucking depressed of a finger dating readily available to anyone with a simple swipe any products items or experiences that you want can be had with the tap of your phone but over time all of these comforts of life destroys the importance and necessity of struggle without any value placed on higher goals where there just is no reason to care means there's no reason for people to properly live or have the will to achieve greatness. Which is probably why 40% of young men aged 18 to 45 meet the criteria for depression and 49% wow. of 18 to 23 year olds have had a thought- That's almost half of all of them. What? I knew it was bad. I didn't know it was this bad. Texas is up, food prices is up, loan does not cover inflation, and every second phone call is Indian tech support. Yeah, great times. Yeah. Holy shit. Damien, thanks for the follow. Hey, mom, I'm on the graphs. No! Wow. ...to passing themselves in the past two weeks alone. And we're seeing the symptoms of this oh my problem god everywhere. the sapping away of our vision and ambition permeates in all aspects of modern society today our culture architecture relationships bodies and minds past civilizations before us have always placed their emphasis on beauty wisdom and logic for all the population to see with great town squares bustling with art life and community these things were placed above all else as the bedrock of their societies laying out a code of honor and struggle in its people to achieve greatness comforts were shown in art and culture but as an aspiration for achieving something great, for following your mastery. But today our cities are mostly devoid of all of this character, and instead they're marked out by the most cost-efficient, bland, and sterile designs to facilitate- Bro, oh, yeah, all of these freaking houses, they're so depressing, man. Like, I, I know they're kind of necessary, like all these, like, Big, giant houses, apartment complexes. I know they're kind of necessary with how many people there are at this point, right? But they're all, all just so... ...depressing to look at. I don't know. Let's go back to the medieval era with gothic churches. <laughs> but then they're unaffordable because corpus own them too. Yes, that's also true. Corpus do own them. And they're also freaking unaffordable, man. And even when they are affordable, somewhat because of uh, programs to help you find an apartment, then the corpus don't give a shit about you. I live in an apartment like this. My apartment, my uh, fucking landlords, the, my fucking corpo that owns my house, or like my apartment complex, anyway, 
the pipes are so bad. My previous apartment got fucking flooded, man. My previous apartment got flooded and it took them almost a year to replace the apartment to put me in another apartment, man. Our technology has evolved faster than our brains and us as humans have evolved. That's one true. One example is we only have the capacity to hold 150 relationships at any given time. Really? Easy in the past, way more difficult now. As an example. Really? I didn't know that. Wow. 150 relationships at any given time. I didn't know there was a number to it. Wow. Uh, well, I'm glad I'm way under the <laughs> under that maximum. I can't even hold 15. Yeah, right. Take a simpler, self-motivated purpose. It's why people flock all over the world to a handful of remaining cities that retain their centuries-old charm to feel and experience the character oh, that's of so bygone pretty. societies that were motivated. Yeah, literally, bro. This still gives a character, man. This still does give the city Retain character. Retain centuries-old charm to feel and experience the character of bygone societies that were motivated by higher ideals. Ideals greater than our modern two-dimensional ways of thinking. With a prioritization of comfort, lust and opulence, and flashy materialism over individual excellence and greater community, we're now reeling in the aftermath, becoming instead a generation of mandated mediocrity. And does this explain why men today seem to struggle more than ever while seemingly having more than ever? America in particular is not actually in a recession. In fact, on paper, the economy looks like the best it's been in a while. Unemployment really? has dropped, GDP is up. But what the people are actually experiencing is a completely different story. We can yeah, see this in a study it really doesn't University feel like that at all. Consumer sentiments, which gathers data based on how consumers feel about the current state of finances. In 2022, it dropped to an all time low. Prices of our average daily needs, like gas and food. <laughs> I, I, I wonder what happened in 2022. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened then, chat. I wonder. I, uh, 2022, oof. Increase mm. in unbearable percentages. In contrast, salary increases do not match, putting a high strain on budgets. Inflation is showing no signs of slowing down as Americans pay over a thousand dollars a month more on the same essentials we were buying three years ago. Nothing's changed but price. The latest consumer price index for March showing basic necessities like our food, housing, and gas are all continuing to cripple Americans' wallets with higher prices. In Christ, how long is it gonna take until the economy finally properly fucking crashes, man? How long? How long? Oh, hi, Sherlock. Inflations are, our, our wages are actually down against inflation since Biden took office. So not only are prices soaring, but, Phantom. you know, Hello? our wages, at least if you measure hourly wages, are not keeping up at all. Keeping your head above water has become the new normal instead of owning a home with a white picket fence. Yep. The rich are becoming- Yep. So many people are just living from paycheck to paycheck, man. Barely anyone can fucking save up anymore. Bro, I can only uh, talk from a standpoint of uh, a German here in this, because I don't know the American economy really too well. But as a German- if you have any issues as a German and you can't work for whatever reason, be it health concerns, or fucking mental health concerns, or whatever the fuck, right? Uh, we do get unemployment um, money. We do get support, but that support is so way, 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 way below minimum wage. It's barely livable. That money is barely fucking livable. It's, it's a joke. That's a fucking joke. And the fucking two or three years back, they increased the money by a whooping three euros per month. Yay. <laughs> I can buy myself one more bread a month. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you! Whooping three euro per month increase! <laughs> yeah! To, to counter... To counter the inflation. <laughs> to be fair, they did increase it... Uh, like, a year or two after that, they did increase it for 50 euro a month, which... Still barely holds up in consideration of inflation, man. Doesn't Germany have immigration bubble about to explode? Yes, we do. We have so many fucking immigrants, man. It's ridiculous.
They use the money, not much though, but in my country it's probably way more than in Germany. Yeah, it depends on the country too, right? Here, like, three euro extra to counter inflation? Like, are you for fucking real? <laughs> Fuck stupid. The richer and the poorer becoming poorer, with the middle class disintegrating yeah. completely. All the knowledge of the past of just going to college, getting a job, and buying a home immediately is just completely irrelevant for anyone working and living in 2024. Spy Universities house. are skyrocketing in prices to absurd levels. The Jesus, housing market man. is in a complete giant bubble. Everyone's sending. Oh, bro! So many Americans have told me they're just gonna take their student loans to uh, to the grave, man. Like, holy shit! Like, what is this? Like, paying for educations. How to fix problems, get rich. Yeah, 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 just get rich. Just buy a house, man. It's ridiculous to me to actually think of that so many people have said they are going to take their student loan debts into the grave. Like, bruh. Oh my god. More and more, all while using these automated testing systems, applying up to 100 jobs a day. Asriel, thanks for the follow. Work. All the while, major companies repeatedly tell us that they can't find any workers for their companies. And the results of this are clear. People are drifting to. Please do a political compass test for us once. I can do that, sure. Jobs, or just not even having a job at all. While the rich buy up resources, real estate, and everything that used to be the cornerstones of the middle class, that is now just an investment hidden through an offshore bank account for some giant investment fund. Basically what they want to do is create a nation of renters. BlackRock coming in and giving them more money than the house is worth. How much more do they give them? They can give them, you know, 30% above. Really? Which is wow. money. And, and then they and just lease those Black homes Rock. out. And they lease them out. It's part of this idea that home ownership and automobile ownership and all of these things, these legacy systems that people want to get rid of. And they go, rent a house, use Uber, Lyft, whatever. You know, mm -hmm. you don't need to own. What does owning do for you? That's mm. that famous article, you'll own nothing and be happy. Right. Um, and because of this, all saving plans for regular people are halted because living pay. What does owning do for you? Owning gives you stability. Like, owning something gives you stability so someone can take it away, so it's readily available. It gives you security and safety and freedom. Like, what do you, what do you mean, what, what does owning give you? It gives you a lot. Like, oh. Am I stupid? Like, what? I've heard this government's conspiracy before to make sure all people are equal in owning nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, it sounds about right. Paycheck to paycheck means there just isn't enough for a savings plan. And whilst there yeah, is still some- Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier out, too. For most, this does begin a damaged path. People end up working in a job that's not in their field, something that they hate to do every day, and eliminates the experience they need for the job in their field. And so even the experience they are getting is just completely useless for getting back on track. In effect, their now entry-level position is further deviating them from becoming lawyers, psychologists, or whichever career path they studied yep, for. Yep, yep. And also don't forget that entry-level jobs now require you to have... <laughs> A lifelong experience already and in some cases even a college degree entry-level jobs by the way they want college degrees like are you for fucking real oh my god they want young people but the young people are supposed to already have like 10 years of experience like make it make sense you will live in a pot you will eat the bucks you will own nothing you will be happy the world economy make the form is where that idea has been pushed from lovely yeah yeah uh, I, i'll be happy eating bucks yeah yeah mm, tasty protein anyone in the e wants to get married with me for financial reasons <laughs> Legally, I can't condone this. And if the middle class is experiencing this, then the lower earners are feeling this even more. The jobs they yep. once had a chance of landing now go to the middle class, while they get hit a bump lower, which is putting millions of people in dire straits. They face working twice as drawn. hard for minimum wage, juggling between jobs, partaking in the gig economy with absolutely no security, all with an extreme pressure to keep up with daily expenses in a completely overpriced mega city. And the truth yep. is both middle and lower earners are now taking a huge hit to their egos. They feel disrespected through no fault of their own, as no man wants to feel like a failure. They don't want to feel like they're not providing or on their destiny. Imagine putting in the hours and effort to get a degree. Oh yeah, remember the fucking women that are saying that 
the men need to have a certain amount of earnings for them to date them. Like, that's also adding to this, by the way, man. That's also adding to this. Oh my god. Oh, life is fucked. Life is really fucked. ...and then having to take a job that's not even within the field you studied for. Well, this is just regular life for most people nowadays. It's making men feel incredibly depressed and isolated. They watch all this stuff on social media. They see people flexing the Rolexes on their Instagram stories. Meanwhile, they're struggling to survive, living a life they absolutely hate. And when friends and family ask about it, they suffer the humiliation of explaining why they had to take what was available. Even though it isn't humiliating at all, and they're doing what they can to survive, it definitely takes a huge yeah. effect on their mental health. Especially yep. as it wasn't that long ago, where it was actually normal to enter the workforce with a mentor who would show you the ropes and encourage you and push you to learn more. Starting at the bottom didn't seem so bad because there was an opportunity to grow and to grow. Rewards, yep. But this imperative step is slowly slipping away. Companies of prestige have forgotten the generation with no experience. And for many companies, this is what they want. This is actually the ideal scenario where they Ridiculous. have people so desperate, so in need of experience, that they can treat their workers like absolute trash. Ah, of course! That's... Uh, now I see. Now I see! It's so they can abuse them! Mmm. Lovely. Lovely. Lovely! Since the 1980s, testosterone levels have dropped more than 50%, and what? they're told to ignore it. Why? Because there's a coordinated effort to suppress masculinity and turn men Wait, into what? something they were never meant to be. This decline is no accident. We're constantly exposed to harmful chemicals in our food and everyday products, bombarded with estrogen chemicals core. from plastics, junk food, and sedentary lifestyles, which is why testosterone levels have been declining for decades, with a 17% drop among 60 year olds. I. I had no idea. <laughs> Microplastics in your balls, literally. Literally, I... I... They are turning the men into fanboys? You know what? 2024 suddenly makes a whole lot more sense. In 2004, compared what to 1987, fuck? sperm count and strength in men are also decreasing exponentially, with a 32.5% decrease in mean sperm concentration in the last 50 years. But here's the good news. There are ways to fight back. And one of the most okay. effective solutions that I found is our sponsor Black Forest's oh. Tarkesterone with Tonkat Ali. This supplement is packed with two of the most powerful natural testosterone boosters available. Tarkesterone uh. is a natural anabolic compound that helps increase muscle growth, boost recovery, and support higher testosterone levels. Tonkat Ali, used for centuries, helps raise testosterone, reduce stress, and improve overall vitality. I've been using Black I... Forests, Tarkesterone, and Tonkat Ali, and I've noticed a huge improvement I in have no words. and focus. It's like getting back the- I- I have no words. Um, talk to your doctor before taking any of this. <laughs> Talk to your fuck doctor before taking any of this. An that yes, this is not an way. Right now, Black Forest is offering a buy two, get one free deal on this limited edition product. And once it's gone, it's gone for good. I can personally vouch for its effectiveness. It's had a huge difference in my energy levels, strength, sleep, and overall well-being. And by supporting our sponsors, you also support us directly. So hurry and take advantage of this amazing 48-hour promo and support me alongside Typical this amazing YouTube brand buddy. using the link in the description below. <laughs> the cost of having can, a job come also on. plays you gotta make the money. I mean, you gotta make money somehow. Try it and tell us if you start growing a penis. <laughs> okay, okay, I will, I will, I'll tell you. Oops, Code Kids in there. <laughs> a party stripping them of their dignity transport costs to their job depending by on the scamming amount, insecure men yes exactly so that at the end of the day they can only pay for rent or food and not both a government grant could replace their salaries and they earn more or less the same amount what's also helping to pay the bills is as i said uh the u.s government in particular uh our disability programs for people who are unable to work those mm -hmm. programs seem to have morphed works, away huh? from their original humane intention and now seem to provide an alternative income source to regular employment for s several millions for actually for millions and millions of these guys. If a job doesn't support your basic needs of a home, food and transport, it wears thin in justifying the effort for this job, especially if you're not getting any experience. And in most cases, if you go into the gig economy, absolutely no security either. All for minimum wage. There's even a new term called quietly quitting, where you do the bare minimum of your job to the point that you're almost rendered useless and you get 
Bro, I think the term quiet quitting is so fucking ridiculous. I think quiet, quiet quitting is literally just doing your job and nothing more. I mean, people used to overwork themselves for no extra benefit. For not getting any extra benefits out of the job. For not getting extra payment. For not getting a promotion. For nothing. And now people are fucking realizing, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a fucking work slave. Fuck you. I'm going to work only as much as I need to. People still do that, but less, less. Yeah, of course, of course. But it's a lot less. Like People are finally like, realizing, like, no, fuck this. Quiet quitting is the opposite of blind, unrewarded revo uh, loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. I think quiet quitting, quote unquote, quiet quitting is a good thing. You say I'm doing that all day again and again and again and again and again. Oh, again. Uh, maybe you need to stop. Maybe you need to stop. Maybe you need to wake up. <laughs> For five years, I was an overworker. I don't qu I quit, but I'm a lot less hardworking than I used to be. Definitely only do as much as you're required for because. We don't live to work. We work so we are able to live. <laughs> or simply quit. The fact that this term even exists shows that attention is desperately needed to solve this problem. And while this is happening, it's becoming more and more common for both partners in a household to be living the same life, or even with most male's partners actually being the breadwinner. And whilst this isn't necessarily a problem at all, it is leading to some weird modern problems in the household. Men with families there are actually is, switch- There, this is exactly what I said before, where fucking women are demanding of their partner to be High earning, fucking high job status, fucking garbage, man. Fucking surface level bitches, man. In their roles with their wives, except they're not actually doing what their wives would do if they were to stay at home. When you look at what uh, mm -hmm. I guess in Britain is called NEET, N E E T, do you say that also in Australia? Oh, NEET, yeah. Employed or in uh, education yeah. or training. When you look at that huge group of well over six million uh, prime age men, the story There's so many needs. about their lives I used to be is a need. A really uh, pretty devastating. It's pretty distressing. They basically don't do civil society. There's almost no worship, almost no volunteering, almost no charitable work. Um, they've got a lot of time on their hands, but they report doing strangely little help around the home or help with other people at home. Because of the situation- It's because they're fucking depressed and they can't. They're too fucking depressed to do anything, you know? I want to fix salary, so I have to put in so much overtime hours, but I have not been paid for it due to be- it fix- That is ridiculous. Isn't that l illegal? What the fuck? Why he calling me out on God? No! <laughs> So basically blame corpus for pushing people into thinking socialism and communism is, is the solution. Yeah. Some men may blame feel corpus. a sense of worthlessness and resentment. Some men might take an hour to clean up the house and fetch the kids, but the rest of the day they sleep or play games. In some cases the wives work and then come home to finish the chores their husbands were meant to do but didn't. And whilst this might cause huge marriage problems, it still feels better off to the husbands. If asked what they do for a living, saying they're on a break or working on a project beats the humiliation of saying they work in McDonald's with a useless degree on their back. Damn. Men without families have nothing to lose so they stop working because no woman would even want them anyway they can't afford there it is. they can't afford a there family is. and since their own families are supportive it somehow justifies them giving up and staying at home rather than facing these societal problems head on with prices rising getting hired becoming harder and harder by the day and inequality becoming rampant within society most men are just deciding to give up because instead of facing the hardships of having a job it just seems so much easier maybe stop viewing some jobs as beneath you like what kind of jobs like working at McDonald's kind of thing, you mean? Like McDonald's? Yeah, yeah. But even McDonald's, even at McDonald's, they are wanting high and higher requirements at this point, man. Every month is trying to get high and higher requirements. The garbage man or, tra or the trades. Bro, garbage men actually have requirements too. Esmond just posted a video, hold up. Okay, we, we will look at that after. We will look at that after. Right now, 
we're in the middle of a reaction. To escape, whether it be Tamily being online, playing video games all day, or hiding behind doing chores at video home, games! they still have a purpose and are doing their best. The point being that for many men in 2024, if they're gonna be disrespected and feel worthless, they may as well choose the easy way out than a battle. If respect had a currency on how it would affect your life directly, you would see a different picture. A man with a job with high pressure, long hours, and doing something that makes him feel degraded would be worth say $100 but staying at home, playing games, and escaping, all while being with the people he loves is probably worth $200 because of how it affects him. This explains why hmm. more and more men are deciding to drop out of society rather than face it head on, as it just seems to be the easier path. If it's a choice between two paths, one that offers little satisfaction while the other provides comfort, it's easy to see why men yeah. are going this way. Yeah. Humans will always choose comfort over satisfaction. Humans will always choose comfort. Of course. Where I live getting a bank loan for a property and building a house is pretty much impossible now. Damn. Bank wants 20% minimum up front. So okay. with average costs of 600k for property plus building costs, urban even more, we are speaking of 120k in cash up you have front. to pay up front to get a loan. Holy! Do you know any middle class family with 120k <laughs> no. plus on their bank account? No, I don't know anyone with proper savings, in fact. <laughs> wow! Insanity, man! It's rude. But the thing is, this is a terrible mistake. And this is creating problems that we've never seen before. If there is no emphasis or any facilitation of the need to aspire to something greater and the game seems rigged to most who are playing it, it's hardly a surprise record numbers of men are dropping out and giving up on the game entirely. The problem is that there's a huge group of men, roughly about 7 million in America between the ages of- Oh, also one big part of this as well as that he didn't touch upon uh, in regards of the mental health issues is that mental health issues in men are just not as taken as serious as in it is for women. Uh, because men are supposed to be the strong and protective people, you know? And if a man cries, then you're a fucking pussy and a crybaby and what are you, a woman? What? This is hurting you? What? Men don't have mental issues. Yeah, exactly. No mental issues for men. Nothing. Nothing. Men are supposed to just suck it up. Yep. Just suck it up. Suck it up. Be strong. Guess I'm a woman then. Yep. Yep. Men are machines. Men are supposed to be machines, according to society anyway. Ugh. <sighs> 25 and 55 who are not working and are actively not looking for work. Now, COVID certainly had a hand in accelerating these figures. One question posed to these dropouts was like how many of these yep. were on pain medication and almost half of these men admitted to taking pain medication daily. And aside from Holy those who shit. desperately need it, these figures could indicate that men are aimlessly numbing themselves to their new reality. And this is great for society as people don't have to deal with this huge problem. And what's even more shocking is that 40% of these men do have some kind of degree. What sort of men are in this group? Demographically, education, family structure, ethnicity, who makes up this group? I mean, well, men have three to four times higher suicide rates than women nowadays, but apparently women are the ones suffering the most. Oh, well, just man it up. Yeah, just man it up. What? 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 You're thinking about, um, game ending it? What a pussy. Pussy! Surprisingly large um, say representation of uh, guys with college or even college degrees. 40% of this group has at least some college, and as I recall, about a fifth or a sixth are college grads. The decision to be in this state is closely related to changing times. We've already discussed the effects of brain rot in another upload, which disabled oh, yeah, we watched that. Generation Z and has already presented problems in finding jobs. They are quick to quit at the yeah, first definitely. difficult task and move on to find something else, but what happens when options run dry and they find themselves simply stuck in limbo? Giving up seems to be the next step, and except that is easy when they're discouraged by the situation. Working off of surveys, the data compiled indicates that these men are not only not working, but they're cutting themselves off from their communities, or there's no incentivization for them to even have any community in the first place. They're hiding out because going out would mean meeting new people who might oppose their lifestyles. It makes it uncomfortable. Why leave when you can just aimlessly watch brain rock content and- Yeah, why leave when you can just scroll TikTok non-stop uh, one video at a time? Just one video, it doesn't take that long, right? Just one more video. Just one more video. Oh, whoop, it's 4 a.m. in the morning? Well, oopsie doops. Just, oh, oops. I hope that doesn't 
get to be an issue in the bot. <laughs> Numb yourself with weed or pain medication and stay inside, in the warm comfort of home. And any sexual needs you have can be satisfied with pixels on a screen. This lifestyle is increasingly becoming more and more normal for men in the West. But what's important to note is that men don't yeah, want yeah, to be this this It's a horrible lifestyle, it's depressing, it's atomizing. What this really is, is just a coping mechanism or yeah, absolutely. Absolutely it is. Because we'd rather be distracted from the fucking shitty world. I mean, who wouldn't want to be? It's understandable. I mean, if you don't feel like you have the ability to contribute to a goal, then meeting others bring up shame, I think. Others uh, brings up shame, I think. Yeah, definitely. Definitely does. Why leave when the German fox is like yapping? Yeah, why leave when you can just watch uh, Kitsu, right? Don't worry, chat. <laughs> Kids just gotta fix all your problems. Form of self defense. Against For legal reasons, is this is not true. Hostile to these men. Up until recently, the problem has been invisible. These figures weren't shown in any statistics or surveys because they slipped through the cracks until very recently. So why did they slip through the cracks? Well, it's easy to see. They simply don't fit the victim criteria. Some have degrees, they're in the prime of their lives, and it was their choice to quit. It's easily overlooked. Yeah, it was your choice! Rights. Nicholas Upstart wrote a book you choose it. Work, and has since exposed and addressed the problems in his book. He says he is trained to look for hidden and plain sight problems, which is how he stumbled upon this issue. You see, these men are not causing trouble at least for now, and they don't seem to be drawing any attention to themselves. On the contrary, they keep them- Okay, they're not causing any trouble yet, anyway, but at one point it's gonna be so much that men are just gonna be fed up. That men just don't wanna literally continue anymore. <laughs> they don't wanna live in this world anymore. And in one way or another, they are going to be consequences. These men get groomed into extremes on both sides. Yeah, true. Themselves. So surveys and statistics just don't include them at all. They don't even register on the scale. And people in society think this is a joke issue. And it's also reasonable to conclude that some of these men may work, but in the underground economy. Work like formal cash jobs, or even shady legal ways of making money. But of course, this is just a minor portion. Don't of want to men. adult anymore? Yeah, I feel that. Out. How is the situation getting this bad? These men have completely lost their purpose in life. All of their duty, their hopes, their responsibilities, their own dignity. Study history, a bunch of frustrated men with no purpose never goes well for the society they are in. Yep. Yep. In value, it's being completely decimated at the moment. And we're seeing this with the form of radicalization online. Suspect linked to misogynistic insult movement. Oh, <laughs> Toronto van attack? Oh, hold up, what? <laughs> Hold on! What happened here? <laughs> what? Growing hatred and division, and a general apathy towards society as a whole. And the longer this is ignored, the harder it's going to be addressed down the line. More men today than ever. Look at the nice people, yeah! Left behind by a world that seems increasingly indifferent to their struggles. While GDP numbers and employment stats may sound like an easy, good solution on paper, especially to government bureaucracies, it will never really fix the reality of the situation for normal people. The real challenge we face today in the West is to find purpose and meaning again to have any reason to even want to participate and achieve greatness in society. We should focus on creating environments where people can thrive, where beauty, philosophy and higher noble pursuits are actively encouraged by the cities and countries that we inhabit, which would give millions of men a reason to care again. Another thing that definitely adds to this is that our lives are increasingly more and more online. Like, especially after that um, weird time period that we had in 2022 and stuff, you know? After that weird time period, our lives have increasingly become more online. And being social is in a human CNA. We need to be social to be happy. Even when we say we hate people, we hate content, we still need to socialize. It's just ingrained in our DNA, man. And the fact that everything is just so online that no one is actually talking to anyone anymore. You can just order food. You can just order an Uber. You can buy tickets online. You don't... You can buy groceries online. There's Amazon Prime everywhere. You technically don't have to speak to anyone anymore. If you really wanted to. If you... Really didn't want to. Even autistic people still need socialization. Everyone needs socialization. Everyone.
Cold was like our own IL version of the Thanos snap. Yeah, kind of. A little bit, I guess. A little bit, anyway. I wanna speak to Oshinero. What? Heading straight for that cyberpunk corporate dystopia. Yay! Yay! Don't forget, AI girlfriends are coming. Good video, though. Good video, though. But yeah, you forgot those two points, at least, uh, in my opinion. Like, that uh, people aren't taking men's mental health issues serious and that we are get just increasingly more and more online as a society. Like, we are increasingly more and more digitalized, you know? But hey, let's go, Cyberpunk Dystopia! Woo! Woo! Thanks for watching, YouTube!